Hey there, and welcome to Play Noggin. I'm Julian, your brain's player too, and hopefully the only other living thing inside your brain. At Play Noggin, we explore the science inside your favorite video games, even if sometimes that science is gross and it freaks me out. That's definitely the case today. If the comments on some of our previous videos have been any indication, a bunch of you love The Last of Us. So let's dive into the world of zombie fungus. The Last of Us tells the alternatingly gut-wrenching and heartwarming story of Joel and Ellie, two people who couldn't be more different, but who are thrust into a world torn apart by a zombie epidemic. If it sounds like The Walking Dead, well, that's because on the surface, every zombie story sounds like The Walking Dead. Zombies have become more like a setting than antagonists these days. There's always an outbreak, either of a virus or some sort of chemical attack, and humanity is decimated. And those who don't die outright are left either a shambling, undead corpse, or as one of the huddled few, the last of us, if you will, surviving against all the odds. One area where The Last of Us stands out in its genre is in the amount of information the audience is given about the infection. The terrifying disease that has turned people into mindless brain gobblers isn't some ambiguous magic virus. Instead, it's a parasitic fungus with a full life cycle that needs human hosts. And I have bad news. Zombifying fungi actually exist. Dun dun dun! They belong to the genus Cordyceps, and they're actually where Naughty Dog got their inspiration when writing the game. Now, I know saying that a fungus causes zombies sounds like I'm aboard the hype train, but I mean it. It really does cause honest-to-goodness zombies. Just, you know, they're ants. Okay, maybe there was a little hype. Mostly found in tropical regions, Ophiocordyceps unilateralis is a type of fungus with a unique relationship to certain species of ants. The fungus infects a host insect and uses a variety of crazy chemicals to control its brain, turning it into a shambling, uncoordinated mess. The fungus will compel the ant to leave its nest and travel to an area that's more conducive to fungal growth. It forces the ant to climb a plant and chomp its mandibles down on the underside of a leaf, where it stays until it dies. The fungus, however, continues on living, and because this thing has to be as freaky as possible, its fruiting bodies erupt out of the ant's head. Once they mature, they release spores that scatter and find new hosts, starting the process again. It's so virulent it can wipe out entire colonies of ants, which, may I remind you, are known for being pretty numerous, and it can turn all of them into a shambling horde. Yeah, I know, terrifying, right? In the world of The Last of Us, the implication seems to be that a cordyceps fungus has spontaneously jumped from some other species to control and use humans in the same way it uses ants. The life cycle is obvious when you look at the designs of the infected in the game. Notice the progression of a human as it gets more and more infected? What's changing? Yeah, the head. The fungus's fruiting bodies are growing and growing, eating this person's brain from the inside out, gnawing its way through the tongue, cheeks, eyeballs, until it erupts from their head and then... Okay, you're gonna have to excuse me, I need, I need some fresh air. Ah, okay, I'm good. What's even crazier is this fungus can control an ant with remarkable accuracy and attention to detail. The conditions it needs to grow are very precise, and scientists who've studied cordyceps behavior have found that most infected ants are guided to precise spots that are just high enough off the ground, about 25 centimeters, on the north side of a plant, in an environment with about 94% humidity, and temperatures between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. I can't even parallel park my car, so that level of control over another living thing sounds ridiculous to me. This need to use a host to reproduce is a perfect zombie motivation. The infected in The Last of Us release spores when their host dies but they can also spread the infection by biting uninfected humans. That probably wouldn't transfer a fungus unless the spores win in the wound, at which point the victim is probably already breathing the spores in anyway, but hey, zombies got a zombie, am I right? So these zombies aren't just mindlessly hunting for brains, at least not directly. When the host dies, the brain, along with the rest of the organic matter, will be used to feed the fungus, which is maybe more gross than just straight up brain craving now that I think about it. Is this how the world ends then? Zombie fungus evolves and turns us into whatever these things are? Probably not. But while this is an unlikely doomsday scenario, it is definitely not the most unlikely. It's a few steps below nuclear war, but a few steps above Independence Day alien laser jamboree, let's say. The reason it's not completely outside the realm of possibility is because there's more than one species of cordyceps fungus. There's actually thousands, and they all have a favorite species. Usually they target arthropods like insects or arachnids. Not all of them cause zombie behavior, though. Some just infect and spread, devouring the insides of tarantulas until they erupt like the scene from Aliens in agonizing slow motion. So, hooray! 
Anyway, the theory being passed around in the scientific community is that the fungi that can control brains have co-evolved with their preferred hosts, and certain variations of fungi prefer different types of ants. When injected into the brain of an ant they're not fond of, scientists found the cordyceps were unable to control those ants because they couldn't make the right chemical cocktail. Don't worry, they still killed the ants just as dead. If this fungus is so adept at adapting, at locking onto a specific species and utterly subjugating it, how safe are we? Eh, pretty safe by all accounts. Some species of cordyceps are even used medicinally in humans, so we're pals now, it's cool. But if at some point in the future they evolve to handle the complexity of the human brain like they can currently dominate beings of lesser intellect, well, let's just say it was nice hosting this show for you all. Best of luck in your new careers as spore bags for our fungal overlords. Hey, thanks for watching Play Noggin. If you want to see us make more videos about your favorite games, be sure to like and subscribe. And as always, if you have any ideas for topics of games to cover, leave it in the comments below. Check out our other videos here, and don't forget to keep on playing.